Hello! So during this video I want to talk about a couple of issues that I found when working with the list view and more specifically with a custom renderer. So let me show you what I have in here. I have a page inside of a summary forms application in which I have a list view that needed to have inside of the view cell, inside of each of the cells, a progress bar. So nothing fancy in here, I just have this grid and I'm setting some labels and a progress bar. But it turns out that my progress bar has a custom renderer because I wanted it to have a different tint for the progress and a different height, so not very tiny. The default one that is at least on iOS is super tiny for my taste. And so I ended up with something like this, which looks okay. And in fact, I have another progress bar right here inside of the second tab. But notice that even though the first time it looks okay, as I head back to the first tab and the cells are redrawn, these progress bars don't look at all the same way. They are tiny again. And the weird thing is that some of them were the supposed height, like this one that I have right here. But all of them were different heights, the default height. So I had this issue and I tried a lot of things uh, around trying to solve this thing. Uh, I thought that maybe the grid was resizing. Previously, the grid that I had inside of the view cell was a stack layout. So maybe I thought that it was being resized somehow and it was hiding part of the progress bar, but it wasn't the case. This is what happened. It turns out that if you are not familiar with iOS development, when uh, one of the cells inside of a list view, or in the case of iOS, a table view is hidden, it can be reused to display the one that is going to be showed next. So as the user scrolls on a table view or a list view in the case of Xamarin, the cells that are being hidden are reused. So no, no new cells are created. The cells that are not visible anymore are being reused. So it turns out that when these cells got reused, I have this custom progress bar renderer of which I talked about in a previous video. The only element changed gets called. So the progress tint color gets correctly set. Notice that I have here some evaluations according to some value and I'm setting the color uh, to a different value accordingly. So this was correctly called, but there is this layout subviews method that allows me to resize, more, sp more specifically change the height or the Y coordinates value e of the progress bar by four times in this case. And this one wasn't being called when the cell was being reused. So it gets called the first time when the progress bar gets created, not when it gets reused or the value changes. So all I did was call this layout subviews method from the on element changed. So I know that when the element gets reused or the progress changes inside of this uh, progress bar, that it's going to be resized again. And with that simple change, with that simple call, after a ton of research and a lot of trials and error, I managed to know that this was the only line of code that I needed to add. But after that, now when I run my application, I can see that the first time the result is the same, but now the next time that these, uh, these cells are being reused, uh, along with, of course, the progress bars, I see that they look correctly. So that is the very simple thing that you have to do in case you have some issue like this. Now, there is a second issue that I had when working with the list view. So let me just change the definition of my list view in here very quickly to set has uneven rows to true. So if you're not familiar with this, you can set has uneven rows to true in case you have many different kinds of cells or your cells are going to be resized depending on their content. So many different cells can have many different heights. For example, in this second tab, I do have many different cells and some of them are higher because they have more content. Some of them are shorter because they have not that much content. But for some reason, I had that set to true in this other list view that didn't need it. 
and so I ended up with some exceptions being thrown at me and I had no idea why. Because the exceptions were talking about a, a different value than expected when calling the number of rows in section. So if you're not familiar with iOS development, table views, which are translated into list views on the summary forms, have a method that is called number of rows in section that returns an integer. And it's going to return the amount of rows per section that the table view has to display. So a list view, a table view can have many different sections, each section different rows. So apparently, at least what the exception was telling me, I was doing something wrong because it thought that certain section was supposed to only display X amount of rows and I was sending in, I was sending X plus one amount of rows. So I thought that maybe I was doing something wrong when clearing my observable collection or when adding new elements to the observable collection. The exception itself was confusing. It turns out that it was nothing of the sorts. All I had to do was make sure that I was setting has an even rows to false or simply not setting it at all because the default is false. So what I think happening here is that since all of my rows are of the same height, something wrong was happening here. On the contrary, on my other page where I do have a list view that has has an even rows set to true, I not only have the data template for the items set to a layout that is scalable depending on the content, I also have a data template for the, t for the headers of the sections. So the headers are going to be of different height as the normal cells, the normal rows. So has not even rows make sense, not in the other case. So of course, when I set this back to false or simply not set it at all, this got solved. So I just wanted to talk about these two issues that I had recently when working with the list view. If it was useful to you, make sure to let me know. And I do want to make sure to tell you because it's important that I have a very good discount for you on a summary course that I have in Udemy that is going to be linked somewhere in this video. Either if this is on my blog or LinkedIn or YouTube, you will find the link probably all over the place because I really want you to take a look at my curse. So that's, that's it. I hope this was useful and if it was, let me know.